Hello, church family, and today we are in Genesis chapter 16. Uh, yesterday, we learned about God's covenant for Abram, and you would think from, from reading that, you would think that Abram's uh, family would start looking on the up and up. You'd think it'd start looking real good. But we find out today through our scripture that that's not true. And just to recap the first six verses, we see that Sarah is still not able to conceive a child for, for Abram. And we know this is in God's timing, but they don't. she doesn't see it that way. And so she starts to think of this idea. She has this Egyptian servant girl named Hagar. And all of a sudden she's like, well, if I can't produce Abram's offspring, maybe I give her to him. And, and maybe that's how the offspring is going to come about. And of course, this happens and, and she conceives uh, a son. Hagar conceives a son. And of course, tension arises in the family. Sarah doesn't, this idea is not a good idea anymore. It's, it's not a good plan. And that's what usually happens when we take God's will and we take his plan and we try to you know, try to figure uh, it out for ourselves. We don't wait on his timing and we try to do it ourselves. Messes begin to happen. Sin begins to creep in and, and things start to look real bad. And so we, we know from our passage here that, that Sarah starts to deal harshly. That's how the Bible puts it, harshly with, with Hagar. And then all of a sudden we notice and we see in Scripture that Hagar decides to lead the family. She flees into the wilderness. And we see in our Scripture in verse, uh, in verse 7, that's where we're going to read. In verse 7 it says, The angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water in the wilderness. Now this is the first time that the angel of the Lord is mentioned in Scripture. But it won't be the last time. There's going to be many scenarios, many stories and narratives that we're going to read where, where the angel of the Lord is mentioned. Now, a lot of people have a different, different ideas of what it is. Some people think that this is just a, a mighty angel. It's a, it's good, just one of God's best angels. Also, uh, many people believe that it's Father God manifesting himself before man. And then others believe that this is a pre-incarnate Christ Jesus. And, and I would say that the, old, that, that the scripture in the Old Testament supports the idea that this may, this is God, that, that, that it is a pre-incarnate. It is, it is possibly God manifesting himself. We see that this angel is going to, to, to declare, declare um, authority. We're, we're going to see that he's able to speak in, in, into people's lives. He also doesn't act like other angels. He doesn't say, I am a messenger sent by the Lord. And then, as well, another, another way to support this is that people throughout Scripture, uh, people that we're going to read about, even Hagar, acknowledges that this is Lord. And I love this because it says that the angel of the Lord found Hagar in a wilderness. And, and Hagar is in this wilderness. And I, something else that we're going to learn in Scripture through our time of life, wildernesses are going to... Come into our life. Uh, it's going to come into our reading through the Old Testament. Israel's going to go through one. King David's going to go in exile. Elijah's going to have to flee. There's many times that people are put into these wildernesses. And I think this is what we're going to have to struggle with as well. Through life, we're going to be put into these spiritual wildernesses. I'm not saying that you're going to have to go. You're going to be placed into an actual uncultivated land or be wandering a desert or anything. But I think many circumstances in our lives can cause spiritual wilderness. Circumstances out of our control or, or maybe even situations that we do have control of. Maybe it is sin that causes it. Maybe it is, uh, it might just be sickness and cancer that causes these wildernesses. It might be our inability to, to wait on the Lord at, at times. There's many things that I think the Bible would, would, would say causes spiritual wildernesses. These places where we we think we're isolated and that God doesn't see us and God doesn't notice us and he doesn't, he doesn't want to be near us. But we see in verse 8 that this is, that, that is not true. And he said to Hagar, the servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? She, she said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. And the angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely mul multiply your offspring so that they, can, they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are pregnant and you shall, you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. And he said, he shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over uh, against all of his kinsmen. Verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. 
For she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. I love that. Because I think in our minds, and, and, and maybe even here, maybe she's heard Abram talk about um, this, this God that they're following. And, and it seems like something, a lot of times we make him into something that, that is unattainable, that he doesn't interact with us. And it's just not true. His character has always, even in the Old Testament, even in the New all throughout history, his character has always been about restoring and pursuing a relationship with mankind. For his glory, but our benefit, he, his character pursues this relationship. And I love, I love how Hagar says it. He is a God of seeing. He is someone that has seen me in my pain and in my affliction. And he sees us in our pain and our affliction when we're in our spiritual wildernesses. He comes to us in those moments. And, and here's the beauty of it. Her understanding that he was just a God of seeing. But we know through Christ Jesus, he's not just a God that sees us in our affliction. But he's also a God that comes and lived and, and lives through our affliction with us. He comes and takes on our burdens. He took on our burdens. He, he come and lived a life in an example um, and, and went through the things that we would have to deal with as humans. He is a God of love and his pursuit for relationship is real. And he sees us, this creator God, this, this, this God that speaks things into existence, sees you, sees I, saw, saw, saw Hagar and, and saw her affliction. And he wants to be there in those moments with us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Tomorrow we're in Genesis uh, chapter 17. Uh, I hope this has been an encouragement to you. God bless. We love you. And uh, we'll see you. All right. Bye.